Hey everybody, hope this finds you doing well. This is Danelle here at Network Chain and today we are going to talk about what's happening in the cryptocurrency and NFT markets over this past week. Let's go ahead and start off with the cryptocurrency market update. As you can see, Bitcoin is currently trading just above $52,000, trading over 7% over the last seven days. So we're still seeing an influx influx of money that's going into Bitcoin, particularly into the spot Bitcoin ETFs. We'll have a quick update on that in a moment. Ethereum is seeing some nice gains over the past week, up nearly 14%, closing in on 3,000. So that could potentially be coming up very soon. It's trading at $2,865. Then as we go over the top 10, you see Solana is up 3% over $110 at $111. XRP still in that 50 cent range or so. It's up 5.84% over the past week. Cardano up over 14%. It's now above 60 cents at 62 cents. Avalanche back above 40, up just about 1.25% over the past week. And Dogecoin still in the top 10, up 4.65% trading at 8.5 cents. So going back to the ETFs, which we've been talking about several times over the last several weeks, because we're still seeing a nice inflow of funds that are coming in from retail as well as institutional investors into the spot Bitcoin ETFs. So as you can see here, Bitcoin ETFs now total 2 billion in inflows to date, led by BlackRock's iBit, I-B-I-T. And you can see here just in the summary that the spot ETFs have accumulated 258,000 BTC as of Friday. And when it was trading at 52,000 per coin, that's 13.48 billion that is currently held by the ETFs. And that's actually 2 billion more than the value of the flows that have come into the fund. So basically those who have vested, particularly those that have invested when the spot Bitcoin ETFs first hit the market are up since their debut exactly 18%. As of Friday, they were up 18% from that January 11th day view. So the ETFs are still doing well. As you can see, this chart is up to the right when you look at all the different spot Bitcoin ETFs that are on the market. Right now, the flows, the net flows, as you can see, continues to increase. So that just goes to show that there's still heavy demand and interest in the digital asset space, particularly with Bitcoin, with these Bitcoin ETFs. So now people are already starting to think about what's next in the ATF market when it comes to digital assets and the next up potentially could be Ethereum. So we mentioned that Ethereum has done very well over the last seven days. You can see it's up nearly 14%. It's a nice steady climb closing in on 3000 potentially over the next week or the next couple of weeks as people are now starting to put their attention towards Ethereum, getting ready for a potential Ethereum ETF. So we're seeing that the price of Ethereum is steadily going up over the past week. And if we look at it over the past month, it is up over 16%. So Ethereum for a while was kind of dragging behind Bitcoin and some of the other altcoins, but now it's starting to make its move. And we wouldn't be surprised if going into this next bull market, whenever we start to see some blow off tops when it comes to Bitcoin, that Ethereum could potentially outperform Bitcoin. So as I mentioned that people are looking to Ethereum because there's a possibility that Ethereum will continue to jump given these ETF expectations. As you can see here, several traditional financial firms are vying for an Ether exchange traded fund in the United States a move that is boosting the token's medium-term outlook. So many of the issuers of the spot Bitcoin ETFs that are out now on the market, many of them have also applied for Ethereum ETFs, and some of them have already put in their applications and are currently having communications with the SEC over these applications. Now, most likely, if there is a decision made, the final decision doesn't have to be made on at least the first application for the Ethereum ETF, I believe, in May. So some people are speculating, I've seen floated around, that it could potentially be in the next month or so. But most likely the SEC, especially given their hesitancy and the language that they put out when they approved the spot Bitcoin ETF, they're probably not all that gung-ho to approve an Ethereum ETF. But most likely they will have no choice given the success of the spot Bitcoin ETFs as well as 
the SEC's performance in the court cases against um, Ripple as well as Coinbase. So we shall see what happens in the future. But right now, you can see Franklin Templeton, BlackRock, Fidelity, ARK, 21 Shares, Grayscale, Vanek, Invesco, Galaxy, and Hashdex have all submitted applications for this Ether ETF. So we shall see what happens going into the halving for Bitcoin, which is in April. And if we then have the Ethereum ETF approval in May, we could definitely see a bull run and a potential blow off top for a lot of these cryptocurrencies going into the second half of 2024. And of course you can keep it right here because we will keep you posted on everything happening in the meantime, as we lead up to some of those major events in the next several months. Let's go ahead and do a quick turn to the Web3 space. MetaMask is one of the most popular mobile Web3 wallets where you can actually have your digital assets from NFTs to cryptocurrencies in a mobile wallet that you control. And it is a decentralized wallet, but they have now integrated with Robinhood to be able to purchase cryptocurrency using your mobile wallet that you control. So MetaMask is a very popular wallet, particularly on the Ethereum blockchain, because you can not only hold your digital assets, as you can see here, but you can also buy cryptocurrency with MetaMask, as well as do swaps across networks. You can see some of the cryptocurrencies that you can swap between. And these are the different payment methods that you can use to pay for your cryptocurrency and transact securely with some of these other payment providers. And now, as you can see, they've added Robinhood Connect. So here is the announcement here on a tutorial on how to buy crypto with Robinhood on MetaMask. So now you can connect your MetaMask wallet and click buy and you would have the Robinhood as a option to be able to buy your cryptocurrency using MetaMask and your Robinhood account, which you've already done your KYC, which is know your customer. You have to do know your customer for US based sales in the United States. And so you would automatically have that through Robinhood. So then you can then connect it to your MetaMask wallet and be able to buy crypto and then do whatever swaps or hold whatever digital assets that you're interested in when you're using your MetaMask wallet. So there's definitely more information here. You can check metamask.io for more particular information when it comes to using the MetaMask wallet. So as we talk about Web3 and digital assets, one of the biggest news stories that came out just a few days ago is that Yuga Labs, which is a huge Web3 company that is the holder and has the IP to the BY BAYC ecosystem, they have now acquired Proof. Proof is one of or was one of the biggest Web3 uh, NFT projects that came out a couple of years ago. And now Yuga Labs is going to be adding, as you can see, to their lifestyle and media company, the creators of Board of Yacht Club, Other Side, 12 Fold, the owners of MeBits, CryptoPunks, and TKTF. They have now acquired Proof which includes Proof Collective, Moonbirds, Oddities, Mythics, and Grails exhibition series. So they are taking on their assets, including their intellectual property, their artistic portfolio, and they're bringing that into their complete brand and company. So some Yuga holders of some of the NFTs, I should say, in the Yugo ecosystem are not particularly excited about this announcement because they feel like, you know, this doesn't necessarily help the Yuga ecosystem, particularly since they're now working hard at developing a game and the metaverse with the other side. And so people are growing a little bit restless because the other side has not yet come out, but it takes time, particularly when you're trying to build a gaming uh, platform. So in the meantime, they are continuing to build upon their collection of assets and IP brands. So it remains to be seen what they're going to do with Moonbirds, but it definitely is big news in the Web3 space. So you're welcome to go here, obviously, to news.yuga.com to learn a, bit, a little bit more about what's happening there. One last NFT project that we're going to talk about today is Doodles. Doodles has 
a bunch of partnerships as well. And they just now released their partnership in collaboration with G-Shock, which is a very popular type of sports watch from the Japanese watchmaker Casio. G-Shock watches have been very popular, particularly back in the 80s and 90s. And they were known for their beautiful colors. And Doodles has a very interesting color palette that is very well known to NFTs and people in the NFT space. And if you go to the Doodle shop, you can see you can buy the G-Shock watch for $169. They've also had collaborations with other companies as well, including Crocs that did very well. And you can see this is some of their other merchandise that you can purchase in their Doodle shop. So feel free to peruse this website and go to the Doodles website to learn a little bit more about what they're doing as they continue to move forward in the NFT space and build on their brand. So we just wanted to give you a quick update on some of the news, particularly that has happened over the past week. As we see, Bitcoin is still holding steady in that $52,000 range. So we'll see if it takes the next another leg up in the next week or two. We still have some time before the halving in April, but in the meantime, Ethereum has been doing well. So please make sure to check us out on X. We post there nearly every day, as well as on Instagram. We look forward to hearing from you and linking up with you soon on the network chain. In the meantime, take care. Bye-bye.